I've played tons of Genesis games and I know what to expect from the console. Some games were great, some were bad, and some were really bad, and that's the topic of today's video, 10 Genesis games that you should avoid, unless you want to know what it's like to eat nachos off the floor of Chernobyl, right next to the elephant foot. These games aren't the worst on the system, but they certainly kicked my ass and I genuinely didn't have a fun time playing them. With that being said, let's begin. Afterburner in the arcades was a gimmick machine, right? Basically how it works is that you sit in a chair, buckle in, and you get moved left and right depending on your bank of the plane that you're flying, which guess what? is constantly being barraged by missiles, meaning that you have the luxury of being tossed left and right as you dodge missiles. Then they ported it. The first one was on the Sega Master System and the second was on the Genesis. If you want to feel really spicy, play it on the 32X where it's called Afterburner, but it's really Afterburner 2. And honestly, I'm not surprised because the people who designed the box for Afterburner 2 were idiots who didn't know the difference between an F-15 and an F-14. Afterburner as a franchise is literally dodged the missile simulator and to me, I've yet to have fun with any of the games. The most recent one was Afterburner Black Falcon, and it's a PSP game, which means I'm sure that I'd love it! Vector Man is awesome. I absolutely adored it, and I don't know if it's because it's a unique spin on the 2D action platformer genre, or maybe it's just that Vector Man isn't a little bitch and he can defend himself fairly well. It reminds me of a slower Gunstar Heroes with platforming. And on the topic of platforming, I'm not a big fan of platforming of the era, right? But this tends to go by fairly painlessly, and it used a specific type of programming known as Vector Piece Animation, hence Vector Man. Then the sequel came, and while it pushed the limits of the Sega Genesis, it also pushed the limits of what I was willing to put up with. I accepted the subpar sort of drab artwork in the first game, but the second kind of looked like a demotion. The levels lacked any complexity, and it has enemies that are total bullshit. They attack you from off the screen, and as a trope, that irritates the hell out of me. Vector Man was one of the last great, if you will, games on the Genesis, so it was kind of disappointing. There was supposed to be a third game, but it was cancelled. Oh well. This game is notorious because it had tons of releases, and literally in every iteration of it, it's horrible, like pool done wrong. I've mentioned it before, I believe in the Super Nintendo or the Nintendo Entertainment System episode, that playing championship pool is the equivalent of having a pool shark in your game room. The computer almost never misses, so if you miss one shot, you're boned, period dot. And you'll be boned on the NES, the SNES, the Game Boy, MS-DOS. Bitmasters made sure that this game kicks your ass constantly. And it's not a good ass kicking where you want to arise to the challenge, right? No, it's a learn your lesson and move on ass kicking. I have a love-hate relationship with the Strike series, in fact Desert Strike was one of the first games I ever gave the revenge status to, and after really digging deep, I decided to give it a real college try, and to my surprise, it was manageable, somewhat fun. Now the premise of the Strike series is that you fly a helicopter and you do specific missions while managing your armor and fuel, like a modern day choplifter, right? But the problem is, fuel is consumed at an economy I can only describe as kids with a Capri Sun on a hot summer day, right? Two sips, it's done, and you only get three lives, so you kind of have to plan your course of action. It's very much trial and error. That being said, Urban Strike is the last game in the original trilogy on the Genesis, but the series did continue with two more games, but Urban Strike to me marks the beginning of the downfall for the franchise. In Urban Strike, they jump the shark. Bad. We control various vehicles, and we still do the same missions, but the part that fucking blew was that there are some cases where you have to do these on-foot missions where you leave the helicopter and enter a compound or hideout, and you have to meticulously avoid being shot. And if you die, guess what? It comes from your helicopter lives. So you have to play a damn near perfect game to have enough lives for the on-foot missions. It's tedious, and I hated it. Like I said, there were two more games. Those were Soviet Strike and Nuclear Strike, respectively, both of which are much to be desired. I've played a lot of esoteric protagonists in video games throughout the years. 
puppet men, overzealous superheroes, legends of time and man, special operators, but none are as esoteric as a dolphin. And his name is Echo. Nice to meet you. This game has a cult following and I can't for the life of me figure out why, it's not a fun game at all. You play as Echo, we get sucked into a time vortex, we have to make our way to Atlantis, get in a time machine, and go 55 million years in the past and fight the vortex queen who was creepy as shit, and then we win. Echo is a helpless protagonist, but in some cases we can use our sonar to fight basic enemies, but otherwise we're helpless and constantly running out of air. A majority of the game is a platformer in some capacity, it's just underwater. You know, the water levels of Donkey Kong Country, it's like that, except with a dolphin and 500% more ass pain. You never know where to go, what to do, and the only insight you have is to shout at the key glyphs, which are crystals that give you ambiguous clues like there's 23 flavors in Dr. Pepper, but none of them can be found in the ship. But it would be more appropriate for it to say, you could have spent your money on Streets of Rage, but here you are playing Echo. Having fun yet, dipshit? Call the fire brigade, I have a hot take! I can't stand Shinobi. Like on principle, I can't stand it. In the arcades, it was a glorified money trap from Sega with a hard game over, and that continued over the next game, Shadow Dancer. Now that being said, I'm shit at liking good games, so feel free to tell me I'm an idiot in the comment section, you won't hurt my feelings, and I do respond to all comments, even the mean ones. The game continues the story from the original Shinobi, where Joe Musashi is going to save his wife-to-be from Neo Zed, a silly organization of criminals. Now the thing I hate about Shinobi is that as a ninja, Joe can't jump very well. Like, at all. He skipped that lesson in ninja school. Sega also decided to give us limited shurikens, which means that the only rational way to defend yourself is to either totally avoid fighting or slash the enemies at a very close range, oftentimes resulting in damage. The double jump mechanic alone made me want to get in the backseat of Thelma and Louise's car, right? And it felt floaty for what it was. Also, the music was made by Yuzo Koshiro, who I love. Like, I love his music, but to me, the music in Shinobi or Revenge of Shinobi kind of fell short compared to what he could do, if that makes sense. It's still a wonderful soundtrack. It's just not as good, not as representative of what he could do. This game is unfair and unfun to me. It might not be to you. It looks good, but I'm not going to judge you if you love this game. For many people, it was a rite of passage on the Genesis. The most recent Shinobi game was a DS title and a new one is being announced. So I look forward to seeing what happens with this legacy franchise. What happens when you take a prototype airplane and try to make a flight sim based around it? You get F-22 Interceptor. I've never flown an F-22, but I've seen them fly quite often when I was stationed at Nellis Air Force Base, and I can comfortably say this game does not do the F-22 any justice. In fact, I don't believe as a flight simulator it does justice to anything. It's a horrible game and it suffers from the same issues that a majority of flight sims on the Genesis suffered from, stuttering frame rate, stupid plot, and a requirement for tolerance that a vast majority of people, like myself, didn't have. There are four campaigns, US, Korea, Iraq, and Russia. Glad to see history hasn't changed much. Even in 1991, there was bullshit in America. And all of those missions, they're extremely subpar. You're just destroying objectives while suffering through the worst controls I've experienced in a flight simulator. I feel like EA could have done exponentially better. They just didn't. Do you like Strider? I like Strider. In the arcades, I even like Strider 2. Number 2. Numerical 2. The number that comes after 1 and before 3. Why do I say this? Because Strider had a home release on the NES, and in my opinion, it blows. And it also had a sequel. Strider 2. Roman numeral 2. Coming after I and before I, I, I. Right? It also has a subtitle. Journey from Darkness. It also has an expanded subtitle. Strider Returns. So the proper name of this game is Strider 2 Journey from Darkness, Strider's Return. <laughs> we see Strider wearing a ponytail, shooting a gun, and wearing a leotard. Hell yeah, Tear Tex. Good job. I'm proud of you. <laughs> the game is horrible, though. It's just bad. Everything I hated about Strider on the NES, amplify it 20-fold. The music is a disaster, the gameplay is grossly unfun, and overall, this game is a slap to the face to all Strider fans out there. The most recent game was Strider in 2014, and from what I've seen, it looks pretty good.
Created by a company with little to no experience in designing games, Heavy Nova is a fighting platformer game. Yeah, you read that right. You control a cyborg, walk to the right dodging bullshit, and then you get into a fight with a boss. The problem is the fighting is ungodly. I understand you're fighting in a Gundam or, you know, robot, and therefore it isn't overly responsive, but fuck, man! It's a dreadful, button-mashing, unresponsive, ear-fucking homunculus of a game. And should you decide to play this, God bless your soul, because it blows. And for some weird reason, it had a sequel, Black Hole Assault, which is exactly how I described this game to my friends. It assaults your black hole. I loved this game for a little bit because it was fun for a little bit before the ambition took over and the game became borderline unplayable. The whole concept of Road Rash is to race against peers, get tons of money, and buy faster bikes. During the races, you'll face problems like your peers turning on you, police officers, and oncoming traffic, most of the which are located conveniently after a blind hill, which irritated the shit out of me. Also, you need to save up money, right? Like I mentioned before. And that brings a horrible grind to getting the best bike. And guess what? When you do get it, you're going faster than the Genesis is capable of rendering, which means your reaction time is borderline non-existent. You'll wreck, and when you fall off your bike, you get launched to Kingdom Come, circumnavigate the world, and have to run back to your bike. It's just not a good time. The most recent game was released in 2009 for J2ME, which I don't know what that is. I know it's Java, maybe for phones. If you know what it is, feel free to tell me down below. I know many of you are well-versed in like the emulation world. And I, teach me. Alternatively, there was a spiritual successor with Road Redemption, but it fell short. And that's it for today. How did you feel about this list? Feel free to comment down below your thoughts, because I would love to hear them, and I know others would too. Also, we're getting closer every day to that 4,000 subscriber goal. If we hit it, I'll do a special video that you all can vote on. Finally, the single most important thing you can do for me is to click that thumbs up button, as it helps boost visibility for the projects that I work on every day. As always, from my family to your family, good energy, good vibes. Fortify out.